on the Bill's show. We're talking about the stereo that was in the Ford Sport truck. We are the old Close Encounters, boys. They put this stereo in this truck. Frig, I bet you it was 2005, 2006, something like that, boys. Long time ago, eh? What I had for a head unit in the old girl, I had the DDX812 Kenwood doubled in head unit, boys. Now this head unit come out before they could integrate everything into it, eh? Look at the size of it. For frig's sakes, it's like a tank it is. So I don't know if I'm gonna use this in the new truck, but I think I might because I don't wanna spend more money on a head unit, so I think I'm gonna stick this in because I want my Bluetooth, my backup camera, my navigation, I do, friggin' right I do. But the funny thing about this old girl, is that if any of you don't know about them, when you bought these things, you had to buy the add-ons. So in other words, I had to buy the backup camera module. Oh, don't mind the mess, boys. This thing has wires like you wouldn't believe. So you had to buy the backup camera module, which was separate. You had to buy the navigation, which was a separate box. You had to buy the Siri, Siri radio, Sirius, Sirius, whatever the hell you call it, radio mod, which I have somewhere, but I don't use it, so it's not here. It's got all sorts of friggin' inputs and outputs, boys. Look at it, eh? It's got two harnesses just for RCAs, it does. This side here is a preamp or output, sorry. So, you know, you can run a rear amp, you can run a sub amp, you can run a center channel amp, boys, and you can run a front amp, eh? It's got lots of options it does, so you can run an actual center channel. Friggin' right you can. Should have used this one in the van. Freak sakes. Anyways, that's a harness for that. This is a harness for the video. So basically you can run, holy freak boys. You run video, uh, this is a. Uh... Auxiliary in. So you could run, I don't know, whatever you want to. VCR, PlayStation 3, um, whatever you want into that boys. Hey, there's another audio in, another one. Monitor and your left and right boys. Hey, and it's got uh, another, a third one. And then it's got the rear camera boys. So I don't know why. Oh, decent. So I don't have to run this box. This is for the Kenwood unit. So I'm just gonna run a generic camera. So guess what boys? Billy don't need old boxo anymore. So that we'll be able to cut out of this harness. Friggin' right we will. But uh, we need all this other stuff because this is a navigation one. And this and that and the other thing. The antenna and the microphone still in close encounters there. So we'll get that out. So I just wanted to show you this head unit. This is old school. Boys and girls, eh? When I bought this unit, it was brand new, and I think I paid 2,700 freaking dollars for it by the time I bought all the different boxes and stuff. But that was back in the day. If you had one of them back then, you were the man, eh? Freaking right you were. That was that unit, and it still works, and I think I'm still gonna use the voice, so we'll put that aside. What I was running for front stage in this truck, I left the speakers in because I gotta leave speakers in because I'm putting the factory unit back in. But what I was running for speakers was I had the, the Kenwood Exelon and they're like a five by seven or whatever the heck they are in the Ford Sport tracks, boys. So those are still in it. But I was running them front stage with a little position power amplifier. I bought this a couple, I blew up the other one. So I bought this one a couple years back and it's a digital 900 by four, boys. So it's actually. Well, 900 divided by four, boys. So she's damn near 250 watts per channel. And I'm telling you right now, it works pretty good. I would have to say it's probably a true 150 watt by four for sure. But uh, you know how they always overrate these amplifiers. But if you want yourself one of these precision power amps, they're pretty freaking reasonable price they are. Go on the old Amazon there and look up them. And uh, they work pretty good. This one here is a model P900-4, which is a four channel amp, boys. And it's got all your high and low crossovers on it. And it's not very big, okay? Not very big at all. Beautiful little amplifier. Friggin' right, it works good. Decent. So that's what I was using in the front stage of the old sport track. For the sub, I was running a WO 10 inch JL which is in the the, the, uh, the new truck, but I gotta build a different box because it doesn't fit. So I was running one 10 inch, which was enough for the old Sportage, but I was running a little bit, uh, I was running a Clarion XH7110 amplifier, which is a monoblock amp. So it's a one channel amp made for sub boys. Friggin' right it is. See, it's only got two outputs, positive, negative, eh? But uh, this, this amp here don't work too bad. It's rated for about 800 watts. But it doesn't make that, boys. You'd be lucky to get probably, I don't know, four hondo out of her, maybe, hey? But it works good for 110. It does, it sure pushes that little bastard, eh? Makes it rock and roll like touch good, baby. But look at her, she's all scratched up and everything from being in the back of the sport track because I had it wedged in behind the seat and I think the jack is here or something like that. But she got a little damage she did. She's a little bit of a damaged goods, but she still works, so. I got myself a spare amp. Maybe I should put it on the golf cart. What do you think, boys? 
But that's what I was running for the sub amp. I also had one of these old school legacy 1.2 ferret cap. And what these caps do is it tells you the voltage, which is cool, eh? And also what it does is it hooks up positive and negative to the battery, takes a charge, and the base hits. Instead of drawing right from your alternator, it pulls from this and then the alternator. And then after the base hits, the alternator recharges and this and that and the other thing. So it's like create a, a giant loop, boys. So if any of you have like dim and headlight problems with your stereo systems, you should run a couple of them. They do help. They don't solve the problem, but they help. Second batteries always work better, but these things work decent. If you're running 110, you only need one, eh? If you're running 112, you probably only need one. If you're running like multiple subs, like the old Van Aruski there, I got two of these and then five batteries, but you could probably get away with one battery if you're running two 12s, one battery and probably about, I don't know, two or three of these would work. Stop your dimming of the lightage, should. Anyways, unless you have a really poor alternator. If anybody's putting a stereo in, I, I would definitely suggest getting some ferret caps for sure. They definitely help to hold a little punch they do. Hey, okay. freaking right they do. I had a pretty good little system in the sport track. It worked good. It doesn't look the greatest sitting here. It's all dirtier than dicks, but it worked good, boys. I just wanted to show you that and leave your comments below and let me know if you think I should put that in the new truck. But I think I'm gonna because I'm not gonna spend money because you guys are gonna say, no, buy a new one for the new truck. But this one works. And it's not worth a dime, boys. I probably couldn't even get 50 bucks for that thing. So I might as well use it. It even comes with a remote, boys. Pretty right, it does. So I might as well use it in the new truck, get the dash kit, and we'll get that installed. I thought it was just a receiver, but it actually does make power. It's 50 watts by four. Because I looked at the harness yesterday, and I said, oh yeah, she's definitely got speaker leads, boys. So purple, greens, whites, and grays are your speakers, boys, if you're ever working on a stereo, eh? One with the black stripes, always negative. Freaking right it is. So if you're ever working with them, purple, green, white, and gray are normally your speaker leads, boys. They go to your speakers, eh? Friggin' right they are. And uh, if you're like me and you hate factory wiring, you're never not sure what colors are what, just go online. I went online for the old truck there when I put the new speakers in to figure out left and right, negative, positive there. She's got a chart for it, boys, so you can figure out the wiring. For sure you can. So hopefully uh, you don't fry anything, eh? You never fry anything. You blame me? Probably not. But don't forget to subscribe and like to this video if you like it. It's just a little, something a little different, eh? Figured I'd go over the old, what was in the old, poor old, there, dear old, close encounters of the third kind, boys. Friggin' right I did. So hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a Merry Christmas. And, uh, you know what to do for now. <laughs>